unbeaten world middleweight champion Michael Nunn faces his toughest test yet against experienced veteran Sumbu Kalambe. It's scheduled for 12 rounds, and it's coming to you next, live on HBO. circuit. Three aging fighters have re-emerged to put the sizzle back in the middleweight division. Roberto Duran's remarkable win over Iran Barkley has set him up to fight the winner of a rematch between Thomas Hitman Hearns and his old nemesis, Sugar Ray Leonard. Meanwhile, a Los Angeles 25-year-old IBF middleweight champion Michael Nunn sits and waits for his moment in the sun. Since he knocked out Frank Tate for the IBF title, Nunn's spectacular style and unquestionable talent have put him on the threshold of superstardom. But Michael Nunn's long road to glory leads to Chiaravalle, Italy. That is home for former WBA middleweight champion Sumbu Kalamba. Patricio, as he's affectionately called in his adopted Italy, won the WBA title by beating Iran Barkley. After three impressive defenses and now a nonsensical stripping of his title, the crafty Kalambe poses a dangerous threat to Nunn's quest for prominence. Two gifted athletes from uncommon walks of life take center stage in Las Vegas. Tonight, they fight for a glorious future. The sun has set in the desert, and we are here to see if a star is soon to shine. Live from the Las Vegas Hilton in Las Vegas, Nevada. IBF middleweight champion Michael Nunn defends his title against the recently deposed WBA middleweight champion, Sumbu Kalambe. It's scheduled for 12 rounds. And we bring you inside the Hilton Center where there is by no means a sellout crowd. In fact, enough empty seats to no doubt disappoint the management of the Hilton. But this will be a knowledgeable and intelligent crowd waiting to see one fighter with a European background making only his second appearance in the United States and a young American regarded as a rising megastar in the sport. Hello, I'm Jim Lampley. When this fight was first scheduled, it was contracted to bring together the middleweight champions under the banners of both the WBA and the IBF. Since that time, the World Boxing Association has seen fit to strip Sumbu Kalabe of its championship because of his having taken this fight instead of a mandatory defense against Englishman Harold Graham, a fighter whom Kalambe defeated earlier in his career. Sumbu Kalambe summed that up for us yesterday by saying it isn't the title that makes the fighter, it's the fighter that makes the title important. And by that token, it may not be so important for Michael Nunn that he's the IBF world middleweight champion as that he is regarded by many experts as a rising superstar in the sport. One of those who has covered him with praise, Sugar Ray Leonard. And many believe that if all goes well for both of them in their upcoming bouts, Nunn and Leonard may meet in the ring someday. But you've been effusive in praising Michael Nunn. What's so great about him? Well, Michael Nunn is the future as far as I'm concerned in the middleweight division. And I can relate to him so easily because I recall when I first won my title, they criticized me saying I was still not a legitimate fighter. It took a loss to Roberto Duran for people to accept me. Perseverance that required me to be accepted as a professional fighter, a legitimate champion. And for Michael Nunn, Colin Bay is another test for him, a stiff test for him. But still, there's questions that need to be answered. And we'll find out today if Nunn can rise to the occasion, as you have so many times in your great career, Ray. Indeed, Callum Bay is regarded by almost everybody as Nunn's toughest opponent to date. Larry Merchant, do you agree? Absolutely. Read my nod. Callum Bay is a very good fighter. He's not only a very good fighter, he is a very polished fighter, a very experienced fighter. And he's fought and beaten many more quality fighters than has Nunn. For example... He defeated Iran Barkley, who had knocked out uh, Tommy Hearns, and of course, who had that lovely war recently with Roberto Duran. Uh, Mike McCallum, undefeated, 
This man beat him. One final footnote. Sumbu means poison. Michael Nunn, take note. But for whatever reason, despite the superiority of his dossier, Sumbu Kalambe, poison, is a five to one underdog here today. Why? Well, because some fighters have star quality and some fighters don't. And it is Michael Nunn's star quality and how he will capitalize on it in the coming months and years, which is most at stake as he prepares now for the toughest fight of his brief career. There is something very different about Mike Nunn. You could see that he was going to be a great performer, and I think probably that's why actors are, are fascinated by, by boxers, is because they, they do kind of what we do in terms of putting themselves on the line, taking chances, certainly to a greater degree than actors do. But um, uh, to, to make things interesting for you as a performer, you have to put yourself on the line, and that's what gr great boxers do. With that lofty benediction from a good friend and one of America's greatest actors, Michael Nunn is ready for boxing stardom. It's been a carefully chosen path for the Davenport, Iowa native who at age 13 selected boxing as his destiny. Since then, Bob Serkin, a well-known amateur boxing official, has advised Nunn for 12 years. As I started growing and getting better, you know, his uh, actions spoke loud in words because it was true, you know. I kept winning, and Bob told me that I'll send you out to the Olympic Training Center and give you the opportunity to fight internationally. And I went out there, and I had the opportunity to fight internationally. Had the opportunity to make the Olympic box offs and everything. So, you know, his words was like, like gold to me. You know, Bob was like a second father to me too, because he was always supportive of me. You know. After just missing the 1984 Olympic team, Michael turned pro with the then unheard of Ten Goose Boxing in North Hollywood, California. Joe Goosen would train him. His brother Dan would manage him. Ten Goose had been begun by Dan and his father, Al, a famous Los Angeles detective and father of ten. Shortly after signing none, Al passed away, but his spirit lives on. Fighters in the Ten Goose stable regularly perform at the local country club. It's a family affair. Up to 40 Goose and family members work each fight. Brother Larry handles the public relations. This is my sister. Mother and daughters run the ticket office. Grandchildren sell programs. Boxing has what amounts to a mom and pop store. We like to enjoy ourselves. The main thing about getting in the business, uh, especially one that uh, you get into yourself personally, is to enjoy yourself while you're working. And we've always had the concept that you work hard, but enjoy it. And I think the results are, are not only evident as far as our work is concerned, but as far as enjoyment is concerned. The family atmosphere is sustained in training camp, where Joe cooks for Michael and the rest of the Ten Goose stable. The axiom here is to think of fighters as human beings first, and that will allow them to blossom as athletes. You know, it's been a great business relationship and a friendship. Uh, you know, so you got to credit the success to the people I have around me, too, because, you know, I've grown not just mentally but physically, too. And, you know, it's just been wonderful, you know. It's like uh, going from a teenager to a grown man overnight. But it's been a lot of hard work. Nunn's relentless work ethic and spectacular showboating style were for years seen only in the San Fernando Valley community of Reseda. But last July, Ten Goose's name and Nunn's future were on the line when he challenged Frank Tate for the IBF title. Tate had twice beaten Nunn as an amateur, but Michael proved he was second to Nunn in a stirring upset. In his first title defense, Nunn easily stopped Juan Roldan. He still feels there's more to prove. It's great that I am world champion. I don't even think like I'm world champion. I'm still fighting like I got to get there, you know, because you always got something to prove, you know. This, this, can this guy take a punch? Can he do this? Can he do it? And I'm always proving these guys wrong. And it's just motivating to me. It makes me better. Perhaps the final motivating factor is the road for which none is destined. Multi-million dollar paydays in his talent-filled middleweight division. The sparkling image of the budding superstar is no fluke. For Michael Nunn, there is no alternative in life to clean living and dedication to his art. Boxing has been great to me, you know, and there's no regrets. Boxing has been wonderful to Michael, and Michael has been great to boxing.
and we bring you back live to Las Vegas as HBO Sports prepares its World Championship boxing coverage. Michael Nunn versus Sumbu Kalambe with the IBF World Middleweight Championship on the line. It's scheduled for 12 rounds. And now with thoughts on both fighters and with an eye particularly toward those intimations of stardom surrounding Michael Nunn, we return to Larry Merchant. Larry? Michael Nunn refers to himself as a boxer, not a fighter, even as an artist. Until he stopped Frank Tate last summer, a lot of people were calling him an artist, a slap and run artist who aggravated his opponents into submission. A lot of people don't like boxers. Now there's a feverish campaign afoot to convince us that he is a star, that he is the heir apparent to the middleweight tradition of Hagler and Leonard and Duran and Hearns. But boxers are a hard, tough sell in this blood and guts sport. Pipe fans want to see action. Fight fans want to be thrilled and moved the way any other audience do. So boxers have to come with some sort of special personality traits to be sold to the public as megastars. An Ali, a Ray Leonard, even, or at least almost, a Camacho. Setting his sights that high as a star, the burden of proof is on none to show us that he has those qualities, show us here tonight. And it's not an easy assignment. He is an extremely gifted, even an extraordinary athlete. But Sumbo Kalambi is extraordinary in his way, too. This is Chiaravalli, a town in farm country on the Adriatic Sea across the Italian boot from Rome. The town where Sumbu Kalambi chose to pursue his career as a prize fighter and to make his home. At first glance, it isn't the sort of place where you would expect an African emigrant to seek fame, fortune, and championships, nor at second glance, but its low-key yet spirited style is a perfect fit for Calumby, both the man and the fighter. He is the first black citizen and the first champion of Chiaravalli. He is accepted there with pride and affection, seen to be as sweet as their favorite pastries. I prefer to stay in this town because it's peaceful and you live well. I don't have problems with anyone. If you live in a big city, there's a lot of confusion. Here, it's peaceful. Chiaravalli seems like a heavenly oasis compared to Columbia's birthplace, Elizabethville, a teeming city in Zaire's copper mine country. Usually, the only way out of Elizabethville is down, down to the mines. That was Columbia's way out as a youngster. He was an electrician in the mines. The work is hard, especially for the miners when they put in the explosives to make tunnels. It's also necessary for them to work frequently with their hands. And sometimes they leave their lives down there. Mines fall on you, you're buried, and you die there. Many of Calumby's relatives also worked in the mines. He doesn't anymore because he was an amateur boxer, 18 and wide-eyed, when Muhammad Ali recaptured the heavyweight title from George Foreman in Zaire. Boxing entered my blood during the big match between Ali and Foreman. In that moment, I became a serious fighter. But to pursue a professional career, you must leave Zaire. They do not have the proper facilities. So I left for Italy to be with a new manager and a new boxing club. Calumby came to Italy single, alone, unable to speak the language. He solved all of that by marrying into a fight family. His wife Rose's brother, father, and grandfather all were fighters. His five-year-old son Patricio hasn't put on the gloves yet. 
nor has his daughter Eliza. Her birth is imminent. Most of all, I'm fighting for my family. I'm sacrificing myself for my family. In the ring, Callum Bay is a consummate boxer, determined first to avoid a blow, then to strike one, which is appropriate to his adopted hometown. Quiet, yet pulsing with life. He laughs that he has never quite got used to the natives' curiosity about their neighbors' personal lives. But he wants to be among them forever. I would like for them to make a beautiful statue of me, put it in the town square, and it will read, The Conqueror of the World, I am Callum Bay. It will be a nice reminder. But there is already a monument to Sumbu Kalambe. It is the living reminder that he has come such a long, long way. And as Sumbu Kalambe prepares to enter the ring, one update. The anticipated birth of daughter Eliza is, as of late this week, a reality. A healthy baby girl, over seven pounds in weight, so that burden of expectation has been lifted from the challenger's shoulders. It's also worth noting that in his hometown of Caravalli, Italy, right now, where it is past quarter after five in the morning, there is a television screen, a large one, in the town square, and hundreds of Calambay's neighbors are up early to watch the international television feed of this fight. Sumbu has uh, awakened the roosters in Chiaravalli this morning. Let's see if he can awaken Michael Nunn's roosters. Sumbu Kalambe has had 50 prize fights in his professional career. 46 wins, three losses, one draw. The last loss a few years back to a left-hander named Ayub Kalule. And that's interesting because Michael Nunn is a left-handed fighter. And with more on that, we turn now to Ray Leonard's tip of the night. Ray? Well, Jim, one thing about it, the Colin Bay's jab should help him get inside and work the body of Michael Nunn. But believe me, folks, that is not easy against Michael Nunn's movement. Now, one thing about Colin Bay, he's a very tactical fighter, very strategic fighter, and this is really boxing when he slip and counter punch. And I really believe that if Colin Bay can make Michael Nunn miss, the most important thing he has to do is to counter, make him pay for those mistakes because Michael Nunn is one of those guys that can get overconfident. Nunn has a problem sometimes. He has a tendency to expose his chin. Now, although he's fast, he cannot afford to do this in early rounds against Colin Bay because of the power. Michael Nunn's favorite punch is that beautiful uppercut. Very short, catches guys on the inside. We all can't be blessed with too many things, but Michael Nunn was definitely blessed with hand speed. And there is the man with the magnificent hand speed, marvelous footwork, coming off the longest inactive period of his career. Michael Nunn will draw most of the cheers of the crowd here, as many of them have come over the ridge from Los Angeles to watch North Hollywood's own fight. His face is as unmarked as Barishnikov's, and some critics insist that they both ply the same trade. The man hugging Michael before he enters the ring, Bob Serkin, longtime United States amateur boxing official who befriended Michael Nunn 14 years ago in Davenport, Iowa, and has been his advisor ever since. And there is the record, 32 wins, no losses, despite the 22 knockouts, many critics and observers of the sport still question his punching power. Well, he just sort of stings you to death. <laughs> that counts, too. <laughs> <laughs> One of the glamorous elements in Michael Dunn's dossier, the number of Hollywood celebrities who have befriended him and now follow him there. A live shot of Gene Hackman coming across, or coming off, I should say, one of the great years of his career. There's Michael Nunn's brother-in-law, Roger Craig, the Super Bowl champion San Francisco 49ers, married to Nunn's sister, and they go back a long way in Davenport, Iowa. Tale of the tape, and you will see height and reach advantages for Nunn. He's also seven years younger than Callum Bay, who at age 32 is in what many of us would believe to be the twilight of his career, but in fact, he seems to have peaked in recent years. And here is our punch stat numbers to uh, give you an idea of how busy these fighters are. Nunn, as you can see, throws 60 to 70 punches around, lands a high percentage, 
but throws very few hard punches. Callenby throws fewer punches, but in the, these fights, at any rate, he landed a very high percentage, about 50%. And jabs, you see that Callenby, who is a much more sophisticated technician than none, throws a very high percentage of jabs. He works in the classic form as a boxer. Rules for the bout, those of the International Boxing Federation, three judges scoring on a 10-point must system, no standing eight, no three knockdown rule. You can be saved by the bell only in round number 12. Right now, let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, this next bout is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation, President Robert W. Lee, Supervisor Ringside, Alvin Goodman. It is also sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Commissioners, Dr. James Nave, Dwayne Ford, Jay Nady, and Freddie Little. The chairman of the Nevada State Athletic Commission is Dr. Elias Ghanem, executive director, Chuck Minker. The three judges scoring this bout will be Chuck Jampa, Bernie Cormier, and Walter Cavaliere. Physicians at ringside, Dr. Flip Homansky, Dr. Donald Romeo, and Dr. Wish Game. The timekeepers, Al Bicek and Mike Lasella. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the world's address for entertainment, the Las Vegas Hilton, Top Rank, and the King of Bears, Budweiser, present the moment you've all been waiting for, the Battle of Champions. Let's get ready to rumble 12 rounds for the IBF Middleweight Championship of the World. The referee for this bout, working his championship bout for the 63rd time, is Richard Steele. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, he's wearing the white trunks with red trim and weighs an even 159 pounds. Originally from Zaire, Africa, he's now an adopted son of Italy. As a professional, 46 victories, only three defeats and one draw, 26 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, the WBA middleweight champion of the world, Sambu Patrizio Palombe. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white trunks with blue letters and weighing an even 160 pounds from North Hollywood, California, originally from Davenport, Iowa, the pride of 10 goose boxing with a professional record of 32 and 0, 22 by KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the undefeated IBF middleweight champion of the world, Michael, second to Okay, let's go. Bob, Bob Aram, the uh, promoter, uh, instructed the ring announcer to announce Callum Bay as the WBA champion, although he's been stripped. Aram says that he's going to sue the WBA, but uh, all of this will be moot after the fight. All right. They're even having okay, a hard time bringing these guys together for <laughs> these pre-fight instructions. Shake hands, good luck. Well, Callum Bay speaks no English, so you have to wonder what the instructions meant to him at that point. The question here is which of these counter punches will take the initiative first? If neither does, we'll have the equivalent of dueling banjos tonight. And interestingly, if you ask 20 experts at ringside which one is going to come forward first, you might find 10 who will say none and 10 who will say Calumbur. Well, none's already been the first one. He's in, middle, in the middle of the ring. <laughs> <laughs> now it means something. I feel it's going to come off to an explosive start. Michael Nunn started off as the aggressive. Keep that jab out there. And again, Calumbur is a boxer. Good counter punch. This is more of a feeling out process. Both men trying to find out what the other one has. I don't think either man will get crazy and then throw some uh, wild punches. Basically, just trying to get loose. You see the confrontation of the Southpaw Nun against the conventional fighter Calumbe. Their front feet will be nearly touching each other through much of the bout. Now, again, the Southpaw stance of Michael Nunn and the height will bother Calumbe a while. 
but you also have to watch how Colin Bay step punches. I mean, he moves extremely well. Good upper body movement. Nunn stepped forward for a moment for the uppercut, but didn't really land it. It's been a jabbing contest so far with the early edge to Nunn. And down goes Sumbu Kalambe after a major league left inside by Nunn. It looks as though Kalambe isn't going to be isn't going to make it. Expected. He was caught cold in the first round, obviously shocked. And what is impressive to me about that knockout is that it's very clear that none came out to prove that he was up to whatever challenge there was. He never ran at all. He stood flat-footed throughout the round. Well, you said he has to excite the public, Larry. I think he just did something very exciting. One minute, 28 seconds of round one, and the toughest opponent of Michael Nunn's career was out of there. Well, one, one thing about it, the pay scale goes up. That was just the dynamite display Here's another look. of power. Here is when Michael Nunn's taking his time, throwing his jab out, and what? The counter left hand of Michael Nunn. It caught Colin Bray flush on the chin. He and had been very relaxed throughout the first round, not looking as though he was pressing the action or looking to do any serious damage. And then this. And you know what people are going to talk about because it was a one-punch knockout. Just the power of his left hand. Something that he wasn't supposed to be able to do. Well, they always say this is a stiff test. This is the toughest test thus far. But here, Michael Nunn shows he can deal with anybody. That's something that Mike McCallum and Iran Barkley, two of the harder punchers in this weight neighborhood, could not come close to doing against Sumbu Kalambe. Well, Michael Nunn got so much leverage behind that punch because he threw his shoulders at the punch. Right now, let's go up to the ring announcer, Michael Buffer, for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Richard Steele reaches the count of 10 at one minute. 28 seconds of the very first round, the winner, still the undefeated IBF middleweight champion of the world, Michael Second to no. I think he's happy. He's ecstatic, and so are the Goosens. This is a family which staked so much on one fighter. They built their whole boxing operation around Michael Nunn. If he'd lost to Frank Tate, they'd have been out to sea financially. Well, one thing about it, he keeps winning, he keeps getting better, and he's getting stronger. Michael Nunn is the future. And now Larry Merchant. Just before we go to the ring for the interview, there are the shortest middleweight title fights of all time. Nunn Calibre takes its place as the third shortest middleweight championship fight in the history of the sport. And now with that statistic having been defined, let's go up to last.